Indiana football coming off a bye week. Can they get it done? And can they, dare I say, stay in the conversation to be in the college football playoff? We'll talk about everything having to do with the Nebraska game and what the Hoosiers have to do all on this episode. Thank you for joining me. Let's get into it. Mark takes the shot. Mark for three on the way. Hello, guys, and welcome to Indiana Sports Connection. I am your residential anchor, Aaron. Thank you so much for being here and being part of this Indiana Hoosiers and Colts community on here. Today, we are going to talk about the Indiana Hoosiers football team. Got a lot of comments yesterday. The excitement. Whoa. Wow. The amount of people that are just really excited about Indiana football. It's fantastic. And I got to say, I was listening to Mike DeCourcy on with Jim Coyle yesterday, and he was kind of like, you know, uh, reverberating why this is such a big game for Indiana and why this new college football playoff is such a great thing. I could not have agreed with him more. I mean, sometimes I do disagree with this guy, but uh, what they've been able to do with the college football playoff is make like every game is just a lot more important and it gives teams like indiana a chance a chance where before we just never had a chance we'll talk a little bit about that but first thank you for joining me on indiana sports connection hit that subscribe button down below indiana sports connection it's electric thank you so much we're gonna turn it on Thank you so much for being here, and especially to the people that watch me every day and tune in every day. I particularly love to hear from you and leave your comments down below. We're talking about the Indiana Hoosiers football team today. Thanks to all of you that watch every day. I really, really do appreciate it. The new sponsor on the show is BetUS. So go to the link in the description down below. You can go to BetUS and use the Promo code Indiana125 and receive 125% bonus on every deposit in your first three deposits. So mark it one, two, three. You will be getting free money. That's like winning before you even play. All of the AdSense revenue from this channel is going to T2T.org. To They give mortgage-free homes to veterans. Something I want to support for the holiday season, which is coming upon us quick. And today in Northern Indiana, wow, it is just uh, 32 degrees last night frost on the ground i absolutely love it it's a time you know my grandpa was a farmer it's a time people are running beans people are running corn i saw you know my uncle gave some pictures the other day of yoders running beans and uh yeah that stuff it just puts you in that spirit the spirit of fall you get that chill in the air and now and now it really feels like a big time football game because indiana is sold out so without further ado let's get into talking about the indiana hoosiers so all right there's a lot to talk about the strategy of the hoosiers in this game uh, Hillbilly Monkey, you're supposed to remind me when I'm rambling on and on about stuff that doesn't make any sense to try to make these videos concise for you so, so that you don't have to sit here all day. I just want to give you the information and uh, make a couple of bad jokes and then we'll get out of here. Indiana against Nebraska. One thing to take into account, this will be by far the biggest test for Indiana. So they have not beaten Indiana any teams inside the top 55 and Nebraska is like right there on the cusp of the top 25. So compared to anybody they've played and four of the teams that they've beaten have been outside of the top 85. So Indiana, they are a little bit of a mystery wrapped in an enigma right now because many people will say, well, they've only played, you know, Maryland, Northwestern, UCLA, Uh, You know, maybe that those teams are Maryland and UCLA, maybe are in the top 55, but not a formidable opponent like the one we'll be facing in Nebraska. Matt Rule, and he is trying to do what Kurt Signetti is doing at Indiana right now is change the culture at Nebraska. Nebraska used to be like a powerhouse in football. So they have, you know, they have a lot of things in place there. You would think their fan base is just ready to explode, but they've just not been able to get it done. Now they got this quarterback that they call Baby Mahomes. I did not realize until I was watching this that he is a true freshman. So 
he has struggled with his accuracy and we're going to talk a little bit about him and the type of defenses that indiana plays so first off let's talk about dylan riola and what indiana has to do to him riola he loves zone coverage and indiana plays almost exclusively zone coverage these stats are from pro football focus so indiana has been in zone coverage 160 snaps and been in man coverage only 20 snaps on the season so that's going to be a big x factor in this game Will you see Nebraska put somebody into motion in the game? Keep an eye on that. Does Indiana go to some man coverage on third and longs and bring some pressure from somewhere? That would be something to look at. Riola has struggled with his accuracy. And I watched, so I watched uh, stats on Pro Football Focus and I watched a Nebraska preview with all the Nebraska fans yesterday. And that was what many people are saying that he has not performed consistently over the course of a game. He has like a good quarter or a good two quarters. Their main concern is, can he beat Indiana by playing one good half of football? And what they're saying is, no, he can't. Dylan Riola is going to have to, and I'm probably butchering his last name, but he's going to have to play a complete game against Indiana because we know what the Hoosiers, they're going to grind you down. They've been grinding teams down. And then when they get to the fourth quarter, they're running the ball with the stable of backs. We got three good running backs. And then we're just able to like power, power over, over them. them. Well, that will be a lot harder to do against this team. Now, I watched the Nebraska game when they played Colorado. Colorado's line is awful. But Nebraska's vanilla defense is... They play a 3-3-5 and a real bend but don't break defense. So by this stat from Pro Football Focus, Nebraska's defense ranks 92nd against the RPO or play action. <clears throat> and that's what they were saying on that Nebraska podcast as well. The defense really struggles against play action. If the Hoosiers are able to run the ball, and then run the ball deep into the game. If Nebraska is not going to bring much pressure, we might be able to move the ball easily between the 20s. And it's going to be a game where getting the ball in the end zone for a touchdown is going to be the difference. And, you know, I know that sounds like a really big cliche, but I mean, they're going to play a very vanilla style of defense and try to keep the Hoosiers in front of them. Can Indiana really get the ball, run the ball in. That's That would be critical. And they, you know, they've played weaker opponents. There's no reason to believe that Indiana can't get this done. But both teams coming off the bye week, that's part of the storyline for sure. For Curtis Rourke, he is going to have to stay on schedule. To me in this game, first and second down are going to be the most important downs. And I know that sounds really boring, but Nebraska is going to want to force Indiana into third and long situations, which Indiana has not had many third and long situations this whole year because we've limited penalties and been able to run the ball on first and second down consistently in most of these games. So what is going to give in this game? Indiana, the line has maybe changed a little bit. I, I saw one site that had uh, them uh, Indiana as a five and a half favorite. But I saw them yesterday as a six and a half favorite. I'm putting money on Indiana to cover the spread because I believe they're going to win this game by more than touchdown. I think they can wear Nebraska down. And I think Signetti is going to have something up his sleeve on defense to rattle this young quarterback for Nebraska. That is going to be the critical spots. One other thing to take into account. So Indiana's run defense, if you look at their statistics, our run defense has been excellent. Nebraska is going to want to run the ball, but also one thing of those statistics that might be a little bit skewed, when you're blowing teams out like Indiana has, you're not going to face teams that are going to run the ball, try to run it down your throat in the second half of games. That could be an X factor in this game. If Nebraska is able to run the ball and wear on Indiana, it would be something that they've never experienced before as a defense running the ball and keeping Curtis Rourke on the sideline would be my strategy if I was Nebraska. Now, can Indiana, can West and Kamara, can they control the line of scrimmage and stop the run the way they have against some of these lesser teams? 
we're going to find out. And that is going to be a big matchup to watch how our defensive line, if we can control their offensive line and stop the running game and force them into third and longs, where maybe we could go into a man coverage on a third and long and bring some blitzers and get in this guy's face and rattle him. You really got to bottle this guy up in the pocket. He runs around like Mahomes. He does it. He kind of runs a little bit like Rourke does. He runs not to look he runs to look down the field he doesn't run to like get a lot of yards like the quarterback for northwestern but he can get a lot of yards if you get back in zone coverage and there is a lot of area up in there this uh dylan riola he will run it up in the middle of the field and slide and uh that could be that's something else to watch he is mobile but Indiana's going to have to stay disciplined on the outside of the defense. And just watching the game the other night with uh, Belichick and Manning when they were talking about Josh Allen, it's like you want your most disciplined guy on the outside to make sure like he is not going to get to the perimeter and to turn turn that in. Like he's not going to take the inside, inside route. So that also, I believe, something to watch for because... Riola, he is going to try to use his legs as much as possible. And that's always that's always the game in college football when the field's so wide open. Guy gets out loose and uh, really put the hurting on you. But what does everybody think of this college football playoff with the 12 teams? I was listening to DeCourcy yesterday and the some of the stuff he was saying, it was really it really shows how this change in the college football playoff having 12 teams and like he said it's probably going to go to 16 teams they'll probably go to 14 then to 16 and it probably always should have been 16 from the very beginning but this has sparked the interest like this indiana nebraska game because nebraska has two losses misspoke there nebraska's five and one i mean indiana's undefeated but Last year, you would not have thought that this would be a game to circle on your calendar at all. So this has brought a real level of excitement to college football, to teams like Indiana, like the teams in the Big Ten, everybody in the Big Ten or the SEC. If you end with one loss, you have a chance to get in this college football playoff, no matter who you are. The SEC has really been kind of crapping their pants and not looking that great this year. I think leaving the door open for a one-win Indiana team, we would definitely get into the college football playoff if we only lose to Ohio State. But we got to take it one game at a time. This game against Nebraska and Gus Johnson doing the game. He is my favorite announcer. Met him one time. Absolutely fantastic guy. And the Carnegie Hall of College Basketball. So much to look forward to. And yeah, I got to say, I'm just loving this college football playoff, this new format. It leaves the door open for so many other possibilities of things to happen. And the best teams are going to get in and you're going to have more than just three games to watch once it's you know late december and january we're gonna have a lot more games to watch watching this tournament is really gonna be fantastic and i can't wait for it all to shake out and if indiana football could be in that conversation and get into that college football playoff wow i mean that would really really change what people think about indiana football could we keep that going forward you know, Michigan State had, and my cousin's a big Michigan State fan. You know, they their team like kind of climbed up the ranks for a long time trying to get into that conversation, you know, with Penn State, Michigan, and Ohio State. And they're almost there. I would say Indiana has a lot further to go than they do because teams like Nebraska and Minnesota even, you know, have some type of winning in their past. I mean, Minnesota's won national championships, I believe, and, you know, so has Michigan State or they've been there. Indiana only has in 1967. So this is a prove it game and it's just a prove it year. And Kurt Signetti, he could not be changing the culture here in a better way. I love to see it. I cannot wait to watch the game. Leave your comments down below. Tell me what you think about the Hoosiers. Tell me what you think 
is going to happen in this game this Saturday. I want to hear all of your comments, all your concerns, and thank you for joining me. And until next time, stay classy out there, Hoosier fans. Hey guys, thank you for joining me on the video today. If you want to see more videos like this, click this video right here and you'll see more Indiana Sports Connection. Thank you for subscribing and giving the video a thumbs up and being here today. I appreciate it more than you know. Bye-bye.